Hey everybody, one pig here with another uh, news video. There were some patch notes that were released on Twitter about two hours ago um, that have our that are talking about a patch tomorrow at 10 a.m. Moscow time, patch 12.11.2. We have some preliminary patch notes, a couple of which seem to be uh, a little bit confusing, so I figured it would do good for me to uh, do a video about it. Fortunately, I have a little bit of a chest cold. No, guys, it's not COVID. My toddler likes to bring home the plague with her once in a while from daycare, and it just sucks that it's happening while I'm on vacation. So while I get to sound like a mixture between corpse husband and a bullfrog, uh, we'll go over the patch notes. I'll, uh, I'll try to... I guess, provide whatever insight I can. I just wanted to give you guys a quick apology for the last video. Apparently the background music was a little bit too loud for some. I'm working with a pretty minimalist setup and I can't always hear things as accurately as I can when I'm at home using, you know, the full studio. So I'll try to adjust it for this one. Hopefully the uh, the audio quality on this for the BGM stuff is a little bit better. Uh, honestly, the only reason why I'm even including it is because I'm trying to drown out the sound of air conditioners and stuff running in the background and the window units and like the dryer running three feet away from the desk here. Okay, first up in our list of changes is that they're adding fence reputation increases when successfully exiting any location as a player scav. Now that is actually kind of huge because one of the biggest complaints that we've had as of recent is that the grind for scav rep has been nigh impossible. If you guys remember, I did a video not long ago where I showed that you needed some 286 player or bad scav kills in order to be able to get that rep grind done after you've exhausted all other opportunity. Now that is a little bit skewed because there is a regeneration mechanic on things like cars and stuff, um, but failing that, we definitely needed another mechanic and this is a, a welcome change. Now the second one is one that I think is a little bit confusing. PMC scav cooperation extracts are now permanently available on all locations. So one of the things that we don't know is whether or not they are adding PMC and scav extracts to the locations that don't have them, minus labs, obviously, and that's what they mean by all locations, or if they mean that when you go in as a scav, you will permanently have the duo extracts as a permanent option on the existing maps. Now, I could see this go either way, but after kind of mulling this over, I think the most likely scenario is that they just mean the extract for your scav will be showing up permanently for the duo extract option moving forward and that they're not adding any new extracts although i think that they should it would be kind of cool now in addition to some of these other bullets adjusted to give us melee sounds added sorting table to the scav item turn-in screen which is something that is a well needed and welcome ol change added new quest for high level players so we'll see some new quests being added tomorrow added the ability to change PMC voices in the sound settings tab. You can change the voice at any time while out of raid. Now this has been a bug that has been around since the very beginning of the, um, the wipe where you'd go to select whatever character voice you wanted to have and that was supposed to stick with you permanently but then everyone just kind of got defaulted back to USEC 1. So at least in this case we can go and pick Josh again and uh 41 should be happy. Various AI fixes added the ability to use the flea market to search and buy items from traders or players below level 20. Now this was something that Nikita had teased in a podcast. What this means is that you'll be able to right click an item, search for linked items or uh, or that exact item and find where the item or things that will connect to your gun build They'll show up in the flea market UI, but it will only be for items that the traders have available to sell you. Dog tags are now sorted by their levels. The way I understand this is the old dog tags, or the way that dog tags work right now, is if you press the sort button, it will sort them according to whether or not they're bear or USEC by alphabetical order. In this case, now they will be sorted by their level instead of alphabetized. Added a 30% discount on all items bought from Fence on maximum loyalty level. So as someone that ground this out, uh, max loyalty level uh, for Fence gives you a 15% discount currently on the items that you buy from him. On the max rep tab, if you go to buy certain items, this should mean that that max rep purchase tab will be less expensive than other vendor equivalents. So something like a, an M1 rig, if you were able to buy that, it should be less expensive than the cash equivalent purchase price from a vendor if a vendor were to sell you an M1 rig for rubles. Added the very low graphics preset, whatever. This bug with uh, hand models having raindrops that didn't render the right way. I'll just go down this pretty quick. Uh, fixed the loot spawn in the lockers on interchange. Fixed means nerfed. Um, apparently, BSG thinks that the treasure spawns that are showing up in the lockers on interchange are a little bit too high or too frequent, so that's going to be reduced. The actual crafting time in the scav case now changes correctly based on Fence's reputation. That was something that we weren't seeing change. Uh, the scav case 
case was staying the same durations even though you would have rep that's supposed to discount this and it wasn't so that's good this one here's a major one and this one's going to take a second fence reputation will no longer increase when you kill a player scav that killed another player scav who was killing scavs to explain this we'll just pull out ms paint now, i know that my stick figure artwork here is absolutely amazing but bear with me what this patch note is referring to is a four person scenario in the first part player one kills an ai scav takes negative 0.05 rep for his effort player two then killing player one would get plus 0.01 rep for having killed the bad guy if player three kind of sauntering along decides that player two needs to die for killing player one he gets plus 0.00 there's no gain and no loss. I can only assume that the reason behind this is that BSG is trying to curb this idea of like having a buddy system where one guy kills the next guy and then kills the next guy and then so on and so forth. Because this was a way where teammates or people that were simultaneously queuing together to try and like daisy chain their rep gains together were able to, I guess, game the game. This does curb that, but I do have some concerns about this. There are some folks that believe that the reason behind this is that they're trying to reduce scav on scav violence, but I don't think this actually reduces anything, and this is kind of why. Let's say you have a simple room with a hallway. And if we're looking at this from a top-down view, we have an AI scav and then three players. So in this case, we have the AI, we have player one, player two, player three. If player one kills the AI, they take their rep loss. Player two kills player one, who was a bad guy. Player two gets the rep gain. Now, player three, because he's, I guess, kind of behind this little blind spot, just hears a bunch of gunfire, some scavs shouting, somebody must have been a bad guy, and player two is the person that won. In this case, if player three comes around the corner and just sees a scav looting a bunch of bodies, in his mind, especially with the way that the rep grind is in this game right now, he's probably thinking there's an opportunity here to gain some rep. So, in killing player two with him getting nothing, it makes him think that there might be a bug in the game. But in his mind, he's going to think, well, I killed a scav that killed another scav and I didn't get anything out of this. So if anything, I think this only would stand to create some confusion as opposed to actually uh, curbing scav on scav violence in any way. Uh, but this is how it's going to be after tomorrow. I guess just kind of keep playing the way that you've been playing and if you luck out and get some rep gain, then good. Added the missing wall in the underground area on the factory location, so that's nice. And then these two are kind of huge. Removed the ability to look through the wall near the door next to the cars in the factory location, and removed the ability to look through the wall in the underground areas of reserve. So there was this really common bug that people were abusing to be able to look through walls to see people that were hiding in corners in the reserve underground because it would call all of the walls and you would just see the player models kind of floating out in midair. Now, of course, this adds risk for people that could potentially be extract camped but extract camped or not no one's gear is worth somebody using an exploit in my opinion just to be able to save some ones and zeros y'all just gonna have to deal with dying if that's the case so the rest of these here this little block down through here looks like it's a bunch of fixes with lighting and spawn locations and crafting times uh, fix the double animation when equipping the mark 47 mutant so that's good apparently the gas station fire on shoreline wasn't doing any damage and now it is they adjusted some ability to uh, mount the sig romeo they changed this quick melee hits can no longer be performed with no stamina so no more left clicking when your stamina is empty you have to right click only which is very interesting and some other quality of life changes and bug fixes so that's pretty much everything i don't know what do you guys think is the uh is the modification of how we're gaining rep now going to be something that people are going to care about is this just going to cause more confusion or uh is it a welcome change Personally, I like the scav extract. I think that that's really nice, much needed, and extracting from, from a scav raid, giving a little bit of rep, doesn't doesn't hurt. Might be a lot more people spamming factory in order to be able to get those points, but hey, factory's a bloodbath and a bunch of piles of bodies and stuff anyway. Honestly, come to think of it, it might not be such a good idea to be spamming factory because there's going to be an awful lot of people pulling some extract camp shenanigans. We could see a lot of body piles on the way out of the main doors. You know what I mean? Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Please do me a solid and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment, and I will see you boys in the next one. Peace.